Today, we're going to talk about how lossless vault protection can prevent treasury wallet exploits. And we're going to talk about a hack that happened to EasyFi. The hack is pretty straightforward. Their private key got leaked and their funds were stolen. We're going to reproduce it, so let's jump to the code right now. We already have some pre-generated wallets here with the corresponding private key in the config file. We're going to switch between these accounts during the demo. Let's start by deploying EasyToken. This code is taken from Etherscan. This is the first version of their token. At the moment, there's another version of the token deployed because after the incident, they did a token relaunch. This code here is of the token that originally was hacked. There are no issues with the code itself and it was their treasury wallet's private key that got stolen. Let's deploy this token. Here I have a pretty straightforward deployment script. All it does is deploy EasyToken and then transfer 5 million tokens to the treasury wallet. Let's run this script. We are running it using Hardhat on the Robston test network. The contract is deployed now. Let's save the token address for later. We also see that tokens were transferred to the treasury wallet, so let's check it out. Here you can see the transaction that was done a little before the demo to pre-fund the wallet with some ether. Here you can see the ERC20 token transfers, and you can see that easy tokens were successfully transferred to the treasury wallet. Let's refresh once more to see the balance. Now you can see that the treasury wallet balance is 5 million tokens. What we are going to do next is to trigger the exploit. There's a script for that. This script transfers the tokens from the treasury wallet to the exploiter's address. It's just a simple ERC20 token transfer. You can see that at the moment, the exploiter's address is empty. What we have to do is use the stolen treasury's account private key. In this demo, we're not going to explore how a private key can get stolen because there are a million ways it could be done. But we are going to see what happens if someone's private key gets stolen. And what happens is that an exploiter can transfer out the tokens wherever he wants to. Let's run this script. We see that the transfer has succeeded. On Robston's Etherscan, we can see that the balance of the exploiter's wallet is 5 million. This means the exploit was successful, and that concludes the exploit. If a private key got stolen, it used to be game over for that account. Now you're going to see how lossless vault protection would have prevented this exploit. The first thing we have to do is create a new version of EasyToken that has the lossless protection code. You can see here that the code is the same as the EasyToken. The only difference is that the token inherits not from a standard ERC20, but from the LERC20 contract. There you can see some parameters being passed down to the base constructor. You can find an explanation of why this is needed and what these parameters are in the lossless documentation. Now, let's deploy this token and let's transfer 5 million to the treasury wallet. The script is pretty much the same as the one we used to deploy the regular easy token, but now, we're going to deploy the easy token with lossless protection code. Also, we need to switch back to the deployer's private key.
Let's run this script. Now we see that the token is deployed. Let's save the token's address to the address book. Also, we see that tokens were transferred to the treasury account. Let's check it out on Ropston Etherscan. Here we can see that easy tokens with lossless protection code were sent to this account. Next, we are adding lossless protection to this treasury account. The first thing that needs to be done in order to protect an address is lossless has to verify your token and verify the address you want to protect. That's needed in order to prevent token creators using vault protection maliciously. Let's switch to a lossless team account and run the token verification script from the lossless side. It's going to verify this easy token. The token is verified. Now we have to verify the address that needs protection. Let's run the address verification script. The address is verified. We should be able to add protection to the treasury address. Easy token with lossless protection code is already added to the UI. Let's select it in the drop-down. Next, we have to set up the protection admin. That can be done only by the token admin. You can read more in-depth about that in the documentation. We are going to use MetaMask for this. This MetaMask account is the token admin, so we are able to use it to set up protection admin. This protection admin will be able to control all of the protection rules for all of the addresses. The first thing we need to do when setting up the protection is to choose the protection type. Let's select whitelist as that is the type we want to use for treasury accounts. Next, we need to enter the address we want to protect. In our case, that's the treasury accounts address. Then, we need to configure whitelist for this protected address. There are a couple of addresses we pre-generated that are called trusted addresses. Let's use those for the whitelist. Finally, the transaction needs to be submitted to the blockchain so that this whitelist is saved on the chain. After this whitelist is saved on the chain, token transfers from the treasury account to any non-whitelisted address won't be possible anymore. we see that the whitelist is saved. Now we can try running the exploit once again. The first thing we have to do is switch our active account to use the stolen treasury private key because we have to run an exploit script using that account. Also, 
we have to switch to using the token that has lossless protection code. Let's try running it on Ropston. You can see that we got an error and the exploit transaction fails. The error says that the recipient is not whitelisted. Just to verify that the whitelist is working, we're going to transfer some tokens to the trusted address that is included in the whitelist. Let's try doing that by using this transfer to trusted script. Might take some time to mine this transaction. It's done. Let's check the trusted address balance on Etherscan. It might take some time for Etherscan to update it. We see that the token is in the trusted account. Let's try doing it with another trusted account. We need to change the script a little bit to use the second trusted address. Now let's run it. This script does exactly the same thing, but now it transfers the tokens to the second trusted account. You can see in the Vault Protection UI that this address is in the whitelist. The script finished running, so let's go to Etherscan and check if the tokens are in the second trusted account. You can see that the transfer went through just fine. Finally, to make sure that the exploiter is never able to transfer tokens to his wallet, we can run the exploit script once more. And you can see that it's not possible. The error occurs once again. Lossless, the first DeFi hack mitigation tool for token creators.